Hi, this is a series of videos in which I'm going to set up a module library of handlers that carry out the various basic standard algorithms. You'll notice that I've got a button over here called Get the Data, and on that button I just call a handler called Get Data. And before we look at that handler, I'm just going to go onto a Word document and explain what's happening in RAM. Uh, I'm going to have a variable n that is going to carry uh, the number of elements in an array. So here's my array called ages and it's got three, four, five elements. And I'm going to use a variable index that's going to count through uh, from one to five so that I can input the different ages. So that when index is one, the user might input, say, 20, and it will go into ages 1. When index is 2, the user might input 26. Index changes to 3, and we'll enter 43. And index is 4, and ages 4 is 51. And Lastly, index is 5, and we input ages 5, uh, let's say 37. So this is what's happening in RAM. I have two single entity variables uh, for carrying how many elements, uh, for counting from 1 up to the number of elements, and then I have this one-dimensional array that's called ages. So going back to the live code program, I'm calling a handler called getData, and I want what I've just shown you in the Word document to happen. So if I move over to the card, which is where I'm going to set up my module library, you can see I've got my handler called getData, and I have my fixed loop index is going from 1 to 5. I'm entering a data item, and depending on what value of index, I'll ask for data item 1, and then data item 2, data item 3, 4, and 5. And each time the data item will get put into my array called ages. And it's a one-dimensional array, so it needs square brackets. And what you put inside the square brackets tells uh, the computer which element of ages you're trying to put the value into. So the first time around it would be ages 1, then ages 2, and so on up to ages 5. Now the problem with this is that it's very fixed to 5 elements and the array must be called ages. And the whole point about a module library is that you're trying to create pieces of code that can be reused for any situation. So ideally it wouldn't just be for arrays called ages but I could perhaps use this for entering 10 heights or 100 prices. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make this more generic, if you like, so that it will work under any circumstances. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change that to n so that it'll work for any number of values. And I'm going to change this to a more sort of generic name. So I'm going to call it, I don't know, data list. But if I do that, I need to make sure that when I call it for that particular problem of five ages, that this will get the value of five, and this will refer to the uh, array called ages. So the way I do that is I pass these two things in as parameters. So I'm going to pass in n and I'm going to pass in my array that I want to use and I'm going to call it data list while I'm inside this module. So this handler that's called get data has got two parameters. You'll notice that I've made index a local variable and that's because it's just used for this loop and it doesn't need to uh, have anything to do with that, the outside world, if you like. It's just local to this handler. 
and these two parameters are going to correspond to the parameters that are passed in when this is called. So let's go back and look at where we call it. So I'm calling get data and I want to pass in two parameters. So I'll go over here. I'm going to pass over 5 for n and I'm going to pass over ages as the array. Now, in order to make sure that the data I type in goes into ages, I need to connect ages with this variable data list parameter. And the way we do that in live code is you use the at symbol. And as soon as I put that in, that's telling the live code environment that I want this to name the same uh, array. And I'll just show you what I mean by that. I have this array called ages. And when I call that handler called uh, get data, I'm saying that I want a data list to be the name of this array as well as ages. That's what the at sign does. You have um, two names and they're both referring to the same array. So anything you put into data list automatically is in ages because they're naming the same set of storage locations. And that's what the at sign does. And it means that when I call get data and I pass over five and ages, any data that gets put into data list, will, data list will also come up in there. But I could also use get data now for, say, uh, 10 prices. And I will have another array called prices. And while it's in here, data list will be naming that array. So any data that goes in will go into data list. But the at sign means that it will also go into the array that is, it's also called prices. So let's just see what that does. Um, let's go into get data and just see what happens. So here we're being asked to enter data item one. So let's do 34, 33, and so on. That's the end of this video. The next video I'm going to show you how we display the data.